we had a patient asking about libido, erectile dysfunction, and how the relationship is with the sex hormones. So the concrete question was, should oestrogen be controlled or left alone if a stable TRT protocol for libido issues and erectile dysfunction? And the other question from the same patient was, should free T be in the upper range or above range or mid range for optimal libido and erectile dysfunction? So in short, relationship between libido, erectile dysfunction and the sex hormones. This is the TRT and Hormone Optimization YouTube channel. And if you want to learn all about the science-based information on this topic, consider subscribing, hit that notification bell, and you'll be on your way. Well, that's a multi-million dollar question. And I wish I had, you know, a concrete answer to that, given my experiences. Um, but... We all know, well, most of us do, that an erection or erectile function is a multifactorial phenomenon or physiological uh, function, multifactorial. It'd be nice to know that there's a linear correlation between testosterone, whether it be free or total, and libido and erectile function, but it's not. First of all, we all, we all know that Little babies and children, boys, you know, pre, pre-pubescent, get erections all the time. And the testosterone are in the dirt. I mean, virtually non-existent, you know my point. Very, very uh, non-existent. Um, and I've seen, you know, men come in with testosterones uh, free, uh, not free total, um, in, a, in a normal range. Free testosterone in the low normal range, even mid normal range, we'll discuss that here shortly, uh, who have significant erectile dysfunction. And I've seen people come in with very low uh, total and free testosterone with you know, raging libidos and no problems whatsoever with their erectile function. So it's, it's all over the place all over the board in my, in my experience. Um, now, most of my experiences uh, with answering these questions today that you pose come from you know, being a board certified sexual health expert through the International Society of Sexual Medicine, ISSM. And I think I, think I may have shown this book, but it's out there. It's the like, textbook. I got it flagged everywhere from notes I've done. But this is 2006, his most edition, recent edition. And again, it's, it's very difficult to, to pin all, you know, all this down. So I think you mentioned the significance of total or, or, or free. In my clinical experience, uh, again, I don't put as much emphasis, anywhere near as much emphasis on the total testosterone as I do the free. So according to the uh, American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine, um, attended a lecture last year, and one of their uh, experts came and gave a talk. And it was a female, a female OBGYN that's also uh, quite knowledgeable in, in sexual health. She mentioned that her ideal um, free testosterone was 180 to 300 picograms per ml. So what does that be quick to uh, 18 to 30 nanograms per deciliter? So, and so I, I shoot for that minimal if I can optimize again. But again, I'm treating men, not lab values. I just find that I have to get the free testosterone more to the levels of, and probably a third of my cases uh, above, you know, 30 nanograms per deciliter. I probably gotta get to 35, 40, 45. So again, I, I take it as high as I can uh, within reason to get the man functional. So back to your uh, original uh, question regarding ideal ranges and do they correlate linearly with, with uh, libido? They, they tend to correlate with free testosterone. Uh, but again, 
I treat a lot of men that come to my office who have great free testosterone and they have erectile dysfunction. Uh, and again, I have guys come in with basement, you know, in the, in the gutter free testosterone and they have no problem with libido erectile function. So there's a, there's a lot of dynamics, especially social, uh, uh, psychosocial, cultural relationship differences, stressors, life stressors that go into in desire and performance or erectile function. And, you know, there's a book out, uh, The Male Sexual Health Guide by Dr. Dudley Danoff, MD. It's a very good book. Again, The Ultimate Guide to Male Sexual Health. It came out five years ago. A great read. I don't agree with, uh, he, he's a urologist. I don't agree with his, uh, his guidelines for serum levels. He doesn't like treating men if their total testosterone is above, is at 400 or greater. Does he mention free testosterone? So another urologist that just says, oh, don't go, don't treat them if they're at 400 or greater. But other than that, it's a great read when it comes to the psychosocial uh, dynamics of ex, you know, expectations for erectile function and libido as men age. And what kind of man, he categorizes men's erectile functions into 12 different categories. So it's a great read, it's a short read, a couple, maybe, maybe uh, 220 pages long. It's easy to understand. I highly recommend it uh, for, for men that want to figure out which category of men they're in when it comes to libido and sexual function and, and uh, expectation, especially when it comes to marital uh, harmony or marital discord. All right. So I think I, I've, I've answered the question. I wish I could, you know, give you concrete evidence, but in my, you know, treating 5,000 men and 40 years in business, um, I do find in summary that uh, there is a correlation, but not a perfect correlation, uh, between free testosterone and men's libido and sexual function. But it's just so complicated, you know, men's sexual performance that, that is, there's more to it than just serum levels. Has the patient himself suggested that uh, oestrogen should be left alone, I guess? Before we continue, if you appreciate the content we bring to this channel, check out the Amazon links in the description of this video. These are the links to the products we use, going from supplements, protein powder, pre, post, intra-workout, anti-aging cream, sunscreen, needles and syringes to inject, and so on. If you'd like to purchase one of those products, please use the direct link so that it will earn us a few cents as a tip and you'll be guided directly to the products we recommend. Thanks in advance. All links should work on the US, Canadian, and UK Amazon stores. Yeah, good point. Uh, you know, back in the day when I first got into this business, so was the bro scientists and the, the, the guys in the gym were, you know, especially uh, Life Extension, you know, they, they were big on saying keeping, you know, the estrogen, I believe, uh, E2 between 20 and 30. And we all know now that estrogen acts like a paraffin interesting hormone and the serum levels don't really tell us much. So I like to get the estrogen levels originally, uh, mainly because I like to show men that it's way too low to be cardioprotective and, and for bone health. And then after that, I, I don't really need to get it. A lot of my men in particular demand that I follow their estrogens because they're still hung up on the estrogen. But again, I will get it mainly to show men that it's too low. And I get it also to, to prove to myself and them that as the testosterone is coming up with my testosterone therapy, that so too should the level of estrogen come up with it. And, you know, in harmony. And um, I don't believe, as we all know now, uh, in AIs, I imagine, I imagine estrogen fluctuations with dose and dosing protocols, uh, given IM dosing, given sub-Q dosing, and given transdermal dosing, I can manage estrogen that way. But again, are we really 
how important it is to manage estrogen. So many men focus on that estrogen. And it's still an old growth science that I'd like to stay away from. But I do get it. I do watch it just to make sure that it is indeed coming up in relationship to my total testosterone. Okay. That's clear. Thank you, Jeffrey. You're welcome. All right, guys. Well, do this next. Click on one of these thumbnails to learn a ton more about TRT and hormone optimization. Thanks. Thanks.